Today I have something fairly special and unique to review. This is an old alpha scintillation counter from the 70s, I believe. This is a model SAC-4 made by Eberline Instruments. It was mainly used to monitor alpha activities in air filters in different facilities, but I suspect that it was also used to just monitor general contamination. For example, monitor the activities in wipe tests of different surfaces and sources. And this is exactly what you'd want to use it for as a private person or an individual. For example, checking if there's been any contamination on a surface, such as a bench, or if a source is leaking, such as an old americium source, for example, or if there's a leakage from a clock, radium clock. It is very use useful for such purposes, and I would highly recommend getting one of these if you ever find one for pretty cheap. It's bulky, as you may see, weighs about 7 kilos, but it's very useful and you'll, it will pretty much just stay on the counter like this. And you can use it any time you want, you just have to plug it in and that's it. To begin with, we'll take a look at the front. This is where you'll initiate the different settings. To begin with, we have the screen where the counts are shown. These counts will continuously update as the counting session goes on. We'll have a little LED here, which indicates if it's currently turned on or not, or if it's in standby. It will glow red if it's currently counting and taking a measurement. We have the start and reset button, as you may see here. It will start a new counting session or reset the current amount of counts detected. Then we have the different modes. To start with, we have a manual mode, which you can turn on by flipping this switch. This will cause it to start counting when the start button is pressed until you turn it off. So you can do counting sessions however long you'd, you'd like, such as maybe a week, though that might not be the healthiest thing for the device. To reset the amount of counts detected during manual mode, you'll just have to press the reset button. Then we have the stop mode, which you flip the switch to if you want to stop the current counting session when either doing timed or manual. Then we have the timed mode, which uses these two switches. One is the time, one is the multiplication of the time. So 0.1, 1 and times 10. So for example, if I wanted to do 50 minutes, I'll turn the switch to five minutes times 10 there we have 50 minutes and that's pretty much it it's pretty simple to use but to put in a sample you'll have to use the little drawer right here so you'll pull it out you can see a little space right here where there's a tray Let's see if we can move the camera a bit closer here's the tray where the sample would be put on this tray can be moved upwards or downwards depending on the size of the sample Anti-clockwise will increase the height, clockwise will decrease the height. If turned enough clockwise, you can remove the entire tray, mainly for cleaning it in case of it being contaminated. And that's pretty much it. After you put your sample here, just turn it in and start the counting session. Pretty simple. Before we go to the fun part of demonstrating it in use, I'll just also give a quick overview of the back side of it. As here, you can see some old technology, specifically the old power connector right here, as it utilizes an old oval type power cord. And that's pretty much what you'll have to search on. It can often be bought on eBay or other sites selling old electronics. So just searching oval type connector or oval type power cord, I mean, should give you a few results. Power cord looks, let's see, like this. An old, very old power cord from the 70s. Mine is a model alpha or branded alpha, as you may see. Then beside the power connector, we have a little black switch right here 
which currently sa says 230. This means that it's currently turned on 230 volts. You can press it downwards to initiate 150 volts for people in the US. So it can be used anywhere. Then we have some fuses, and then we have the on and off switch to turn on the power and turn it off. Over that, we have a little, well, a pretty big heatsink, and a little screw to adjust the high voltage going to the scintillator. I would not recommend playing around with this, as increasing it too much may damage it or break it, or too low would result in a much lower efficiency. But that's pretty much it. I'll now move on into actually using the device against different samples. I have now brought out a few samples which the detector can be tested against. We'll take a look. We have a little piece of americium 0.9 microcuries from a standard smoke detector. We have a very low activity radium watch end. We have a radium watch, a piece of uranium glazed ceramics, some more americium, 10 microcurie strips each from an industrial smoke detector. We have a very powerful strontium 90 source in the form of the TP2 source. And we have a little B-8 source right here. Which is slightly contaminated with radium. Not enough to contaminate the bench as it's pretty much stuck on it. But still a small amount which should be detected by the alpha scintillator. While the betas should be, well, left out. Anyways. Let's put the different samples inside of the detector to demonstrate how it works. To start, we'll just flip the power button on the back upwards. We'll move the tray out. We'll start by the, with the simple 0.9 microcurie americium source. Put it in the tray. Make sure it's the right height, which it is, perfectly fits. Move the tray in, and now we can choose which mode to use. Start by switching to manual, and you can instantly see a bunch of counts being detected. This is, this is just the total amount of counts detected, not counts per minute. Hit reset to reset amounts. We can also do time. I'll put it on 10 seconds. Turn on timed. Start the counting session. And you can see there's a huge amount from just this short period, 33,000 33, counts per minute. 33,000 counts, I'm so used to saying counts per minute. And that's pretty cool. This is from a simple Amberesium button. The, the detector is so sensitive. You can also do a re radium watch. This will actually detect radon and radon daughters, which is stuck in the crystal on the outside. So I'll put it in, lower the tray a bit, so it fits. Make sure it's the right height, a little bit lower, like that. Move it in, do another 10 seconds. You can see a few counts being detected. This is, as said, from radon daughters and radon problem, which is leaking out from the wristwatch. Pretty cool. We can also try the piece of Fiesta wire. Make sure it fits, which it does. Push it in, do another 10 second run. We'll get a few counts. Not as high as one would expect. The majority of radiation seems to be beta from daughters in the uranium. You can also do the B-8 source. I'll just 
I have to wash my hands after this. Increase the height a bit to make sure it can be detected. Put it in. Run another 10 second count session. You can see some counts being detected from the contamination from radium, da radium daughters and radium itself. If this would have been data, which we should get a huge amount, as this has an activity of 1.6 microcuries. You can also try the 10 microcuries strips of americium. These are quite active, about 10 times the little button, which was first counted. Well, put it in, do another 10 seconds. You can see a huge amount of counts being detected. Pretty amazing. That's a very spicy stick of americium. I'll grab a pair of tweezers to put it in, as this one can leak a bit. And I'm back after removing the americium. I put a little piece of paper down so we can measure the radium wax hand. These ones may contaminate stuff which is why the paper is there. The B-8 source, while contaminated, has it pretty much engraved in the metal. And after a few wipe tests, I noticed that this does not fall off anymore. It's stuck on the source. But I'll put a little watch hand on the piece of paper. Lower the height a bit. See if it fits, which it does. Put it in. Start another counting session, and as you can see, we're getting counts. This is a pretty low activity watch hand, so there's not that high of an activity compared to most radium items, but it's still something. I'll again pause to remove the watch hand with a pair of tweezers, and we'll be right back. And I'm back. Now we'll do the final, which is the DP2 source. The, this is 244 microcuries compared to the 1.6 microcurie B-8 source. And this one does not have any contamination. No, bay, no strontium contamination outside the little epoxy or resin capsule. So I normally would not recommend you holding, this like, holding it like this. But mine does not leak. But it will still register some counts. This is due to the activity being so high that it does still induce a little bit of luminescence in the phosphor used in front of the photomultiply tube in the scintillator. The phosphor used is zinc sulfide, which is activated with silver. We'll try this. We'll start by doing a background counting, as the amount of fake alphas detected are very low, even though the source is so strong. So we'll have to do a one minute background and then a one minute on the source. I'll change it to one minute times one, run it, and I'll kind of pause the video while it's doing the background counting. Start it and be right back. And I'm back. It's almost done now. As you can see, there's still no registered counts. That's because, well, there's no alphas present. Only ones would be in the form of radon or contamination on the tray. It's finished now, as you can see by the light turning off. We've got no counts on the background measurement. So now we'll put the strontium source underneath. We'll lower it to make sure that it does not get stuck. And now we will run another one minute measurement with the Stontium 90 source instead of background. Turn it on and I'll, well, can I will already see that there's counts being detected, but I'll pause the video to wait a minute. And I'm back. You can see that a total of seven counts was detected. Not a lot, but still it shows that the betas can interfere with the reading. I know this because I did the exact same test almost instantly after I got the source where I had not been in contact with radium for probably a month before which shows 
that it should not be contaminated whatsoever and it did cause it to register some false amount of counts which I find pretty interesting there is one more thing which I want to show and then it's over I'll open this unit up and show that it can also be used with a rate meter I'll be right back and also just to show how we open it up there's two screws on each side that's everything which is holding the metal case on the detector so you just unscrew it the flat headed screwdriver and then you can lift the entire metal case off And here you can see the inside of the scintillator counting station. I'll turn it around to get a better view of the scintillator. And here you go. This is the housing for the scintillation assembly. So this is mainly the photomultiplier tube. The small little plate of uh, silver activated zinc sulfide on top. The cool thing here is that the scintillator well, is uh, powered with a simple B and C connector which can easily just be unplugged and hooked up to a rate meter. So I got a Ladlum model 3. I'll move this to the side a bit. I got a Ladlum model 3 with a B and C connector. And I can show you that you may also use the scintillator with a rate meter. But to note is that the scintillator does not have any type of mylar window on top. It's just loose. It's totally exposed at the bottom. So you cannot detach the housing from the unit. It would just fall apart into the different photomultiplier tube and the phosphor plates. But anyways, I'll connect this and I'll show you that it does work with a rate meter. Like that, the rate meter is now connected. So, we'll turn it on, put it on times 100, and we'll try and put a piece of americium. It's the same 0.9 microcurie button. We'll put it on the tray and we'll push it in. You can see the scale move as it's registering some of the counts, about 250,000 counts per minute detected. To note here is that the rate meter at the moment, which I'm using, is outputting 900 volts, while the alpha scintillation assembly is using around 1500 volts, I believe. So it's much 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 less sensitive at this moment due to the low voltage used it's mainly to show that it does work and it's pretty cool it goes back down when the source is out but that's uh, pretty much it everything i wanted to show i hope it was interesting and uh, that's it